You just became president, and it's hard. You want to ignite the right, but you don't have the stamina. You definitely have some explaining to do, but your brain's not attached to your mouth. Who knew fascism took so much energy? We did. That's why we created Adderall 45. Adderall 45 is the anti-filter your dumb mouth always needed, so you can finally let your inner Hitler soar. Stupid morals. Those are for snowflakes. Now is the time for Adderall 45. Adderall 45 is not FDA approved because fuck regulations that make sense. Also because the secretary of the FDA is under investigation. Side effects of Adderall 45 may include narcissism, orange skin, tiny hands, windmill cancer, late night Twitter rants, mushroom penis, slurred speech, both sides syndrome, contorted twitchy face, cafe face, borderline hair personality, hair anxiety, and comb over attacks. Calling into new shows and pretending to be someone else even though everyone knows it's you. Adderall 45 not strong enough? Try our Hannity Slow Release Tablet for a steady stream of disinformation 24-7. So talk to a physician today anywhere they prescribe bone spurs. Adderall 45, because every white power starts with a little blue powder. So to be clear, Mr. Trump has no financial relationships with any Russian oligarchs. That, that's what he said. I, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the, our position is. I'm not aware of uh, any of those activities. I have been called a surrogate at a time or two in that campaign, and I didn't have not have communications with the Russians. What do I have to get involved with Putin for? I have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I don't know anything about him other than he will respect me. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. So, it is political. You're a communist. No, Mr. Green. Communism is just a red herring. Like all members of the oldest profession, I'm a capitalist. Hello, and welcome to The Daily Beans for Friday, April 26, 2019. I'm your host, A.G., and with me, as always, is Jaleesa Johnson. Hello. And Jordan Coburn. Hello. Jaleesa, welcome back. Hey, thanks. I'm happy to be back. We missed you. I miss you guys, too. I feel better, definitely. Good. You had a good day off? I did, yes. Rejuvenated. Very nice. Good self-care day. (laughs) Awesome. How was your evening? It was good. My little sister just came into town, so hung out with her and my dad all day. Nice. And that was, yeah. Nice. Did you, did you, you did some stage time last night, yeah? Uh, I did. What was yesterday? Oh, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did my first night working at the La Jolla Comedy Store. Oh, nice. awesome. Yeah, and I got to go up and do, yeah, 10 minutes. Um, probably the worst crowd I have ever seen. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and just for the fans, she doesn't have to work there for money, for stage time. It's a whole yeah. different, like, currency. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, de- it is a different currency. Money's nice to you, though. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the crowd was just, like... They were doing that thing where they're looking at each other like like you're in high school and you have a really lame substitute teacher. You oh, know? I hate those And they're crowds. like, who is this bitch? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's like what the crowd was doing. Like, how dare you get on stage, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were not there to have a good time. What a bunch of dicks. Yeah. yeah Completely well. all their fault, not mine at all, obviously. <laughs> totally. <laughs> well, you're among friends now. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do, comedians. If there's ever a time when things don't go well, we just sit around and bitch about the crowd. Oh, definitely. It's always their fault. The crowd is always wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but there are legitimately sometimes just crowds that are not there to laugh, or maybe it was a weird day, they had a bad day, a lot of weird news happened. I don't know. I don't True. know. Yeah, yeah. It is La Jolla, so I don't know how informed they are exactly. <laughs> what? That's not fair. That's not a fair accusation to make. <laughs> They're pretty informed, I would they are. think. You got to have some brains to make that money. That's true. <laughs> Someone's making the money. Someone's got Usually. the brains. Yeah. Usually. True. Though. I, I mean, more meant like a living in their own world kind of thing. You yeah. Know? Like paradise. A, a little kinda, bit. A little like bit of a, a bubble. bubble. Yeah, mm-hmm. Like my life is fucking dope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like there was problems that like they get flooding sometimes from like, I guess like. I don't know. I guess it would be rain, but I saw that on the news once. Like people in La Jolla were really freaked out because their pools and everything was flooding, and I was like, "Wow, it's oh. like <laughs> such a first world problem." La Jolla people problem. Yes. Yeah, your pool is flooding. Yeah, <laughs> Russell Hicks it's... would say they saw they took one look at you and said, mm, "She smells like loose change." <laughs> <laughs> That's what Russell Hicks would say. Yeah, I do feel very like below the financial line that they're, that they're used to interacting same, with. Same, same. But when I get there, I won't make fun of them anymore. <laughs> and he talked about yeah, how not they, all La they installed all these roundabouts in La Jolla 
Jolla neighborhoods, and he was like, it was to confuse poor people uh, <laughs> who drove into La Jolla to just to drive the right the fuck back. Oh, it gets oh me every gosh, time, gosh, man. Yeah, so I fall weird. for it. Yeah, good, good old so Russell Hicks. Yeah, no, they're wherever good, they're, you are, they're good people you. though. Yeah. I, I feel like I normally have very good interactions with the people. I'm j- I'm just messing around. Yeah, Jordan's for the people. I enjoy kayaking at, yeah. at La Jolla Shores. Mm-hmm. Nice. I've yet to do that. Yeah, yeah, I still love Black's Beach out there. It has the best nude beach, I think. Yeah. Yes, and it's not called Black's Beach because Jaleesa goes there. <laughs> we, we've already I want it to be renamed in established. my honor, though. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, so just, How was your night? <laughs> what did I do? I took care of a, of a convalescing podcat. Yes. That's right. He's here in studio with us, guys. He's uh, facing the wall right there. <laughs> he's staring at the wall because he's high. A little high, yeah. Um, he's wearing his jammies. They are the cat's pajamas, literally. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, he's got his Star Wars uh, X-Wing fighters ones on still. Um, I'm going to change them tomorrow. He's going to get into his either his Chewbacca ones or I got some Harry Potter ones. I got a Dumbledore's army. Oh, Aww. so cute. I'm thinking of putting him in Have that. you heard about the latest news about Dumbledore? Uh, I don't want to spoil it for you. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm Apparently, he was in a really heated sexual gay relationship with another person in the universe. Like, J.K. Rowling just dropped it on Twitter, and a bunch of memes started popping up, like, too much information from J.K. Rowling. In the Harry Potter universe? Absolutely. And then oh. someone said, um, they just made, like, a play on the meme. They were like, did you hear that Dobby has herpes? <laughs> like, oh. oh. Sorry. Poor <laughs> I remember poor meme. when that was happening, actually, and I was so confused Matt on yeah. Twitter. Give yeah. Dobby the herpes. <laughs> Dobby is free. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with herpes, for the regular, besides the discomfort, oh, yeah. I guess. But yeah, I, yeah, it was just funny to see people just like take that information and run with it on Twitter. Well, that's it. If you get the herpes as a house elf, you are free. If your that's how it works. Bestows herpes upon yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. It's at least they could do. I think <laughs> for all the awkward conversations with other elves. I what? Think, what is? What is he? They're house elves. Yeah. Elf, yeah, yeah. House elves. Uh, I think that's the lore. Yeah, yeah, as opposed to field elves, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you did a slavery joke. <laughs> all right, where's the poop joke? It's coming. My cat is constipated. <laughs> there you uh, go. Yeah. I don't know if we can make a joke about that, but he's staring oh, at the wall. Oh, it's just real life. Yeah, yeah. He is. That's just real life. Real life poop oh. slavery jokes. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, we have some big news dropping today, including a sentencing decision for Maria Butina. We have some polling numbers now a week after the Mueller report was released and a new piece in the Washington Post about Rod Rosenstein. Uh, also, like I said, in podcast news, Abubica used his litter box today. Yay. Yay. Uh, and he's eating like a pig. His breathing tube bandage comes off tomorrow, and he's wearing his onesies, so I'm excited. I'm just watching him lick his pajamas right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've tripped like that before. I want to be so high that I lick my pajamas. Oh, yeah. Pajama licker. Yeah, he's like, damn it. I'm delicious. His hair <laughs> bob will just be a ball of lint. I, really, I can't tell you, though, how I'm so relieved he's home, and I'm happy. It's all thanks to you guys, so thank you, thank you. Uh, he says hello, and he licks his pajamas for you. <laughs> Uh, tonight, we're going to go see uh, Janine Garofalo at American Comedy Company. So with, cool. With some friends, some desperately needed laughs and perhaps a cocktail. Actually, definitely a Fuck cocktail. Yes. Nice. What time are you going? Late uh, show or early show? Well, we're going to hit the Tipsy Crow at about 7.30 and then we're going to go to the late show, the 9.30 okay, show. Okay, because I'm going to mm-hmm. try because I'm on the weekend at Madhouse. If anyone's in San Diego listening to this, I'll be on the weekend tonight Hell and tomorrow. Yeah. But yeah, I'm trying to, I, I want to go. Yeah. I want to get up early and come. Yeah. Yeah, come on up. That's tight. Cool. I have a date tonight. Oh. Yeah. If not, we'll cruise over to the, the Madhouse. What time? Madhouse right around the corner. What time are, is your show? I'm doing I'm both shows, 7.30, 9.45, Friday, Saturday. Main stage? Yeah. Hell Touch yes, you. dude. Yeah. All right. Nice. Ryan's nice. headlining. No brick room for my, you. My boyfriend. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. I Ryan wish I could Hicks see it. Is headli- mm-hmm. Nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's true. I sucked a lot of dick for this spot. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I mean, you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> I get my own spots. All right, it was a coincidence. That's true. That's very true. Jordan's amazing. consensual, consensual. Yeah, yeah. I've I've sucked a lot of dick where I didn't get anything for it. So, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, there's this old story, uh, and it's a true one, where I did a fundraiser called Rock the Walk, where we raise money for AIDS Walk, mm-hmm. and I hired a flock of seagulls and went in Rome, oh. and they both came in, and their fee was five grand. So that's basically twenty five hundred dollars a song because they're both one hit one hit wonders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they they get on stage and this is an AIDS benefit. They get on stage, they get off stage, and they go, "Hey, if you want to come back to our hotel room, uh, we could probably, you know." figure out a way to take care of this fee and I'm like get oh, the gross. fuck out of my face at the AIDS yeah thing? at the AIDS benefit <laughs> and I'm like get go no I'll just send you and so I had to pay the $5,000 I had to take a loan out of my car to pay it because mm-hmm. we didn't sell a lot of tickets and we gave everything to charity but that $5,000 in equity has been following me around on the last three cars Ugh. and I'm finally down to almost paying it off but I, I, I call it and I'm 
I, I'm actually like, I feel proud that I didn't do this, but I'm also really mad because the because <laughs> I sucked a lot of dick for nothing. <laughs> Uh, and I could have done this one for five grand, but I, you know, I was like, no, I'm not going to suck a flock of dicks. So. Right. <laughs> flock of dicks. <laughs> Covfefe. A covfefe of mushrooms. <laughs> so, um, Oh my gosh, that's so. Yeah. Yeah. But that 5,000 is almost paid off and that was from 2006. Nice. So, yeah. I'm glad. I would have loved for you to have done it and been like, when in Rome before you do it. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Why'd you do that? When in Rome. <laughs> I promised. Oh, oh, such a good song. And then I ran. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I'll show myself out. You guys want some news about yeah, politics? Sorry. Yeah, we got, we got some news. <laughs> we can talk about dick sucking for <laughs> stage time all night. Uh, anyway, guys, Trump came out of the gate all crazy like today, calling the uh, Russia probe a coup, uh, perhaps a coup that simultaneously exonerated him. Okay. Hmm. Uh, he said that at a speech today at the NRA, quote, they tried for a coup, didn't work out so well. I didn't need a gun for that one. Oh, my God. And then he said spying, surveillance, trying for an overthrow. Uh, what? A severe uh, misunderstanding of the word coup. Uh, an overthrow. <laughs> uh, America's future has never been brighter, yet Democrats have never been angrier, especially now that their collusion delusion has been exposed to the world as a complete and total fraud. He said collusion delusion. He loves that yeah. one. I want a uh, Capri Sun flavor like that. <laughs> <laughs> collusion delusion. Yeah. Stick a straw in and suck it down. Yeah. All right. There's my jingle for the that day. That was really good, guys. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, anyway, that's what he said to the NRA. And speaking of the NRA, we got Maria Butina's sentence today. Jordan, what do you have for us on that? Yeah, so uh, Maria Butina, a.k.a. the Devil's Mermaid, was sentenced to 18 months. <laughs> she was scheduled to 18 months in a D.C. District Court. <laughs> Why a mermaid? Because uh, she has red hair. Yeah, yeah, oh, I oh, totally oh, thought the Little to Mermaid. Joke I yeah, did. so many songs came yeah. to mind when you said that. <laughs> Look at this gun. Isn't right? it neat? <laughs> Wouldn't you say my collection's complete? Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't you say when it comes to foreign influence, she got everything? Damn. Yes. That was quick, AG. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do a whole song. Dude, yes. Yeah, we didn't edit that, guys. That was back to back. <laughs> no. <laughs> That is so pretty. <laughs> and that's exactly because she I'm did a Beauty about. and the Beast thing, so right? Yeah, why not make a whole? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, so many Disney movies, unfortunately, could easily take on these characters. <laughs> <laughs> what is a flamethrower, and why does it? What's the word? Burn. <laughs> I want to live out in the sun. I want to marry Paul Erickson. <laughs> A walk in the yard, get my green card, and be part of your world. Yes, hell yes, I love Friday episodes. I was so just gonna say this is so so chill. <laughs> I hope that was that alone is worth the three dollars a month. Hey, I, I want to pay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we might have to cut that out and release it to the public. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> pretty good little song. It was very great on the fly as well. Hmm. Such a brilliant mind. Brilliant mind. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> I, I can flow. I, I can have fucking flow. that word up. Um, yes. All right. So <laughs> we never got past her being a little more. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she was sentenced today to 18 months. Uh, this happened. Yeah. Which is exciting. And what we were hoping for. But honestly, we were not sure that was going to happen, and it did happen, so that's awesome. And this was uh, for working as an unregistered foreign agent on behalf of the Kremlin. So this comes after she pled guilty back in December to conspiring with the one and only Alexander Torshin to influence conservative policy through the NRA. Uh, she's getting credit for the nine months already served, so she'll also get expedited deportation to Russia once the next nine months are through. Um, Judge... Chutkins? Is that how you say it? How do you, how do you spell it's it? It's C-H-U-T-K-A-N. Chutkin? Chutkin. Who can Chutkin? <laughs> Hell yeah. Judge Chutkin. Yeah, that's how he won his whole <laughs> judge campaign, right? <laughs> can, can. Chutkin. Do the Chutkin. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we Chutkin. Chut, Chutkin. Chutkin. Do the can, can. I had your Mulan rouging it up. I like it. <laughs> okay, so Judge Chutkin. Do the Chutkin, can. <laughs> <laughs> he said, or she, or sorry, Judge Chutkin said that uh, 
Bettina's efforts, which included the coordination of that visit to Russia by NRA leaders that we've reported on, uh, the, ju- the judge said, quote, that those efforts were all used to establish back channel lines of communication to advance Russian interests. The conduct was sophisticated and penetrated deep into political organizations, end quote. So good to hear those words come out of the mouth of that judge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and although Maria admitted to the FARA violations, she did not admit to nor was she charged of any espionage crimes. What um, do you do with a Russian like Maria? I could do. I could do. So I could do Disney Maria Butina songs all day. Yeah, yeah this is very inspirational. We gotta drop this mixtape, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's like okay. Um, <laughs> so in uh in in court, Butina said. Quote, ignorance of the law is not an excuse in the United States or in Russia, and so I humbly request forgiveness. Which makes me wonder if this was like a direct stab at Donald Trump that Jr. That is. I was going to say, right? she's smarter than Donald Trump Jr. Yeah, but then I was thinking like how much access she has to news in the mermaid prison she's in. Also known as SeaWorld. That joke doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Black but I wrote fish. it down and said it anyway, including the that doesn't even make sense part. <laughs> I'm, really happy. I'm really happy to know that. that. I walk my jokes back in scripts. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, so her and her douche attorney, um, a cheerney, tried to make the argument that she was just a hardworking student at American University working towards a career in international policy. Uh, But the judge made sure to recontextualize those claims and make it clear that while she uh, while the judge believes that Maria was a hardworking student, she said, quote, she was not simply seeking to learn about the U.S. political system. She was seeking to collect information about individuals and organizations that could be helpful to the Russian government under the direction of a Russian official and for the benefit of the Russian government. Yeah. And Paul Erickson paid people to do her schoolwork for her. So it's not like what? She was not yeah. a hardworking student. They all had Aunt Becky's. Yeah, <laughs> she got into USC with Aunt, with the help of Aunt Becky. Yeah. We could tie it all together. It'd be yeah. great. I love how she like must have picked that university too. Yeah, I'll go to American University. Right. Yeah, totally. It's <laughs> like Eagles. a big where, where they're like, well, what college you go to? He's like, it's called George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> oh, GW. Yeah. Did you pledge? Every morning, you know. <laughs> or like uh, coming to America yes. when they go to Queens to look for a queen. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I went to the, the university. Which one? The University of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Barr wanted her to go. Barr actually advocated, uh, pushed, and tried to get Maria Butna to have time served so that she could be swiftly ex- exported, uh, deported. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and the NRA wanted her to go, too. Um, well, too bad, because now she's going to be here for another nine months, and I'm wondering if Congress is going to call her to testify, yep. with, especially with that new lawsuit against the FEC, to look more closely at the donations from NRA to Trump and just the whole inner workings of the NRA and everything. I mean, I think that they should call her at least the House Intelligence Committee uh, should call her to testify because she's in country. She's they've got her. She'll be here for nine more months. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah the Her attorney also made sure to note that she wasn't brought up in the Mueller report. So I'm curious to see how that all ties together and everything, and because that's got to come up as well if she can she goes in front of Congress too. Mm-hmm. She wasn't yeah. brought up in the Mueller report that we can see, right? That's right. Yes, oh. yes. She could be one of those covered up twelve referred cases. True. Yeah, yeah. Under yeah, under like a like a incoming Erickson indictment maybe or something, or, or I wonder why that would be redacted. Uh, it might ongoing. Have, it might yeah. It, it might be ongoing because yeah. uh, Erickson like, was indicted in South Dakota and, and right, Mueller might have handed stuff. that off. Yeah, but Mueller might have handed that off, found it, and handed it off to them. Or uh, she could be in there because of uh, her. Maybe she uh, knows something about where the money into the NRA and how oh, it was yeah. funneled, or or something like that. And then of course we have her selection of uh, well, her saying that uh, she had influence on the selection of Secretary of State. Mm-hmm. Uh, who ended up being Rex Tillerson, who's mm-hmm. a, a friend of Russia, yeah. and not Mitt Romney, who is definitely not a right. friend of Russia. Yeah, I do wonder what that redaction, uh, redacted section will, or all of them. Will oh, reveal. yeah. It's not collusion delusion, it's redaction action. <laughs> yes. We're oh, find out what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but he only has, he only listed out basically two instances that they were looking into, which was IRA's efforts and then... Um, Obviously, the social media the, thing and the yeah, obstruction. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she wouldn't be involved in that. Uh, so we, if he was. Oh, the he, email hacking. Sorry. That's what my brain wasn't pulling up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if he did have something, it, 
it wouldn't have fallen within his scope, at least not what he has said his, his scope is, and it would have been handed off. Yeah. So if it's in one of those redacted referrals, he did see it. Mm-hmm. If it's not, he didn't look at, Bo- at Butina at all. But we do know that the Erickson is unrelated and that, that she, so far as we can tell, is unrelated to the Mueller probe. Yeah. So anyway. Cool. I'm done. Thanks. No, no worries. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Uh, Jaleesa, we have some poll numbers from Washington about the Mueller investigation. A week now, we've had the report a week. What do those poll numbers say? Yeah, well, AG, simply put, most Americans are not in favor of impeachment. In a Washington Post poll uh, slash ABC poll, we learned that only 37 percent of Americans seem to want to get rid of Trump, which is a big dip from 56 percent just a month ago. And all of this is really just breaking my heart because, I mean, I get it. To most Americans, the Mueller investigation appears to be over. And in the grand scheme of things, Trump appears to be getting away with all of this. However, if you're listening to this podcast, you're likely still holding on to the hope that the dozen or so investigations spawned from the Mueller probe will wreak havoc upon the Trump family. So I'm with you on that. But again, I can see how that might also just be justice porn sometimes. And there haven't been any public hearings. All most Americans have, because most Americans don't listen to this podcast. What? All (laughs) most Americans have is this 448 page report. They didn't get the summaries. I mean, I I understand that the summaries are probably the executive summaries that are within the report. But people aren't reading them. Who's going to crack it open? Right, Uh, right. You know, I mean, we're going to put out our special on it and hopefully everyone shares it widely. But you know, and there is a free audible audio book uh, where you can actually sit and listen to a reading. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, they don't know about this. And that's why there's this huge the, the, every I think all Democrats agree that whether it's an impeachment inquiry or whether it's investigations in the House, there need to be open public hearings about what's in the Mueller report. I think we're just kind of having a little infighting about whether it should be an official impeachment inquiry or whether it should just be investigative. Yeah, yes. they need to hurry their shit up, though, while all these goldfish of a freaking citizenry (laughs) (laughs) are like sitting here their clocks ticking well Trump's blocking it all so which could also lead to an article of impeachment because it did for Nixon we'll get into that later oh yeah no all good points and uh, the House Democrats are confused about where to go with this too they don't seem to know how to get the public back on their side Specifically, they lost a lot of the independent votes, so they're going to have to work on that if they want to beat Trump in 2020. And uh, I kind of feel like a sports commentator when we say things like that. You know, we're like, just got to get out there, Democrats, give 110 percent, you know, go blue or go home. Do your best. God willing. (laughs) Oh, my God. We all won't die. Exactly. They do really need a head coach. (laughs) They do. Yes, we need a leader. That's, I mean, Elizabeth uh, Warren, right? Who Pelosi is supposed to be. <laughs> oh, good right. point. Yeah, but and God bless her. She's uh, who fuck. What, what did I just say? God bless her. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I hope that too. But you know, I mean, I'm not at all denigrating or downplaying what kind of job she's doing. I, but she, she has her position. Um, I may disagree slightly with it, mm-hmm. uh, but she is leading in the way she thinks she should be leading. Absolutely. And you said, you know, it's a slow process with government. So I'm, so I'm with you, Jordan. Slow. I am impatient, but I get it. They're torn. Um, something else well, to pull. Oh, Go sorry. ahead. Sorry. No, I'm please sorry. do. I'm just going to say, like, it's not even so much me being impatient, but more so just thinking they have a small window of time, basically, Good that point. they could even get away with something like that. With doing anything. And with yeah. any amount of support, which is already waning, as yeah. you're talking about. yeah. Definitely. Something else the poll showed us is that less than 30 percent of Americans believe that the report was unfair. Hmm, 30 percent. That number is interesting. I wonder who those people are. And uh, also 53 percent of Americans believe that the report did not clear Trump of any wrongdoing. So 50 percent of Americans think he's guilty for something. (laughs) Similarly, about half of Americans think he obstructed justice. The other half does not. This country, we seem really divided right now, like probably the most we've been at odds since the Civil War, if yeah, I had to it's guess. the ones that read and the ones that don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? It's what we're reading. You know, we're not reading the same things. And, and even people that are reading the facts, other people aren't reading those same facts. <laughs> so. yeah. If everybody had read the report, mm-hmm. uh, those numbers would be different. And yes. that is what Barr was counting on. He was counting on nobody reading that report. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And his press conference really helped with that agenda. Um, so, yeah, the poll also says that Trump's overall approval rating is at 39 percent, 42 percent among registered voters and 58 percent of Americans say the Mueller report hasn't changed their opinion on Trump. And only 30 percent of Americans say the Mueller report made them less likely to support Trump in 2020. How many percent of Americans? 30 percent. That's actually pretty big. Yeah. That okay. Is. Because I think people who have been following this, mm-hmm. like when you say 58 percent haven't changed their minds, that's not just people who support Trump. That's people who don't. And this Mueller report just 
backs validate up them. there. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. totally. But that thirty percent, those are probably some independents there, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's probably all it is, really. Yeah, um, yeah. And those are that's the that's the, who we're targeting. I mean, we target everyone. Everyone should be uh, a potential vote. Yeah, a and, and educated and. Totally. I want everyone to have be an educated piece of this electorate, but that's kind of where everyone's money's at. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I see- personally am voting with women of color in twenty twenty because I think they are going to pick the next president. So I because if if the nominee is not somebody that women of color turned up to vote for, then we're going to have a hard time absolutely. in the general. Absolutely. Good point. Yeah, yeah. So whoever the women of color are going for in the primary mm-hmm. is probably who I'm going to go for. Yeah. What about if they write in Beyonce? <laughs> are you still going to go for it? <laughs> that's, that's not a way to... <laughs> no, it's not going to work. <laughs> That'll be Dude, like Kanye, 2%. Beyonce, Kanye, Oh, shit. 2020. Damn. Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I do. Okay, I want to see a liberal think tank, though, get a group of people together and do a study or something where they just get everyone to sit down. They can verify that they read through the report or at least the consequential, the most consequential findings and then take those. Yeah. So you get you get a group of people who uh, you so you you poll a bunch of people and people who say that they really didn't have an opinion on the Mueller report. You get them in a room, you give them the report, you pay them a thousand dollars. They read the report. And then you ask them again yes. and see if, uh, who was moved. That's yeah, a great I idea. See that. Yeah. Get on it. Think Somebody. Tanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone. Yeah. Get on it. <laughs> think tanks. <laughs> That's all I could think to yeah. say. That was a general. Yeah. I have no idea what the fuck think tanks do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys think. tweet at the person that can do that. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Think about tanks. <laughs> Crew could probably do it. Lawfare could probably do it. Oh, um, yeah. You could get some organization like that. We could do it. It wouldn't be legit, probably. <laughs> We just sit people down and pay We them. didn't have any money. We'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> you can donate blood and yeah. I'll give you that money. And then you could tell us what we'll the take beans. Is. Yeah. yeah. All the beans, coffee beans. We do we do love them. All right, guys, we uh I want to talk about another piece from the Washington Post that came out today about the characterization of Rod Rosenstein and his behavior during and after the Mueller report and the Mueller investigation. We all know Rosenstein's job was in danger multiple times during the Mueller probe, particularly after the New York Times reported he, he suggested wearing a wire during meetings with Trump, as McCabe had said. Uh, in this new article, one source said that Rosenstein was teary-eyed before he had to go meet with the Trump chief of staff and give him an explanation about that report, about wearing a wire. And in that meeting, Rosenstein assured the president he was on his team and he criticized the New York Times, blaming it, blaming the whole thing on Andy McCabe instead. And during that meeting, he told Trump he would be treated fairly in the Mueller investigation. He says, I give the investigation credibility. I can land the plane. What the fuck? Yeah. So here we have a deputy attorney general pledging loyalty and telling the subject of an investigation that he will land the plane for him because we're, we're assuming he didn't mean I'll land the plane up your ass. You know, we're assuming that was <laughs> yeah. supposed to be a good, a favorable, for yeah, Trump. A favorable for Trump. I'm going to drive that plane up your ass. Uh, absolutely unethical conduct. Absolutely unethical conduct, particularly considering that whole, you know, telling a press. It gets worse. On multiple occasions, Rosenstein told Trump he was not a target of the Mueller probe and that he felt Trump was being treated unfairly. But in a speech Rosenstein gave Thursday, he said, quote, some of the nonsense that passes for breaking news today would not be worth the paper it's printed on if anybody bothered to print it. Uh, In addition to slamming the press, he blamed the Obama administration for the handling of the investigation and for not publicizing the full story about Russian hacking and social media influence operations. And he quoted Trump to make a point about the rule of law. (laughs) So he's clearly moved over to the Trump. Trump sycophantic singing singing Trump song like Barr yeah, is and doing. What is that about? And uh, we also learned from this article that in a May eighth meeting with White House lawyers, Rosenstein criticized Comey's handling of the Hillary email investigation, and that's what prompted Trump to ask for the letter that he wrote justifying firing Comey. I still don't know why he wasn't recused from this. The next day, so right? May yeah. 9th was when he was fired, wasn't yep. it? Yep. So one read of this article is that Rosenstein was doing everything he could to let Mueller finish. Like he was kissing Trump's ass basically Mm -hmm. to keep the probe going. But there's another more sinister possibility that Rosenstein did something that no prosecutor or deputy attorney general should ever do saying that he was on the team of the subject of the investigation. Also odd that Rosenstein quoted Donald Trump on the rule of law. The way that I read it as the same way John Heilman reads it. He was on uh, MSNBC earlier that Rosenstein survived by kissing Donald Trump's ass. Mm -hmm. Uh, Was he trying to protect Mueller or trying to make himself more central to this? And Rosenstein, somebody said Rosenstein's weakness is his weakness Mm. and his willing to do some uh, things wildly inappropriate. 
his willingness to do some some wildly inappropriate shit. Quote, on multiple occasions, Rosenstein assured Trump he was not a target and told him he was being treated unfairly. Now he's standing behind Barr, signing off on everything he said, and he's citing Trump on the rule of law and criticizing the Obama administration and the media. So he's moved from Snoop Dagg to full-blown Trump sycophant. Yeah, yeah. So that's where we are with Rosenstein. And because we all, you know, throughout most of this investigation, we've been like, yeah, Snoop Dagg, you, you're taking the hits, taking them for the team. But it seemed like it was more about self-preservation and rolling with the punches um, than actually protecting the investigation, more protecting himself. Mm-hmm. And to a fault. Yeah. But yeah. but like and, he, and and now that I've got this vision of him being teary eyed, having to go in to talk to Trump's chief of staff after the wi- wearing a wire report came out. And the characterization of Rosenstein's behavior when talking to Andy McCabe in Andy McCabe's book, he just seems like a giant baby. Yeah, yeah like a wishy-washy, spineless. Right, like, what do I do? Yes, yeah, like, yeah. whatever's happening in front of him mm-hmm. is basically what he's going to change himself to fit. Yeah, but standing up, at, because before the Mueller report came out, he was like, you're not going to extort the Department of Justice. And now he's like... The media and Obama, it's all their fault. And uh, Trump said this about the rule of law, and that's important. And you're mm-hmm. just like, he what? caught a little yeah. backlash and he pussed out. And then or I shouldn't say puss because vaginas can take a lot. Um, oh, yeah. God. Yes, he's like ball. It's like a ball sack. He's weak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My and vagina's then, gotten teary eyed, though, before going to talk point. to chiefs of staff. That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and then also. Chiefs of staff. <laughs> 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 Sorry. I like that. I like it. <laughs> oh, God. Um, wow, you guys came in on an interesting day. Yeah. yeah I knew today I was going to be special. Yeah. Well, yesterday it was like pretty chill, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then today's just a big boom of energy. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there was also when he was talking to McCabe, we talk about this in the book review, and he was saying how remorseful he was basically for kind of writing that memo and feeling like he was duped by President Trump. And it seems like he just says what he thinks he needs to say maybe. And Yeah. He kind of kowtows to the crowd he's talking to. Um, God interesting mm-hmm. yeah i'm so sorry i'm so stuck on why do people say balls are strong when they're so weak i mean like you just tap them <laughs> you tap them i don't know they... why dudes wear their ovaries outside of their bodies that's dangerous these are the questions <laughs> i'm sorry i just couldn't get why do you keep head. your ovaries outside of your body <laughs> yeah i just in a tiny tiny thin skin pocket drives me crazy <laughs> vaginas deserve a better rep i'm serious they do we they are much better protected that's yeah? for sure yeah mm-hmm. much oh, are better we? oh i guess yeah we keep everything up <laughs> well inside. i mean like physically <laughs> yeah yeah, it's like a little pocket. It's all tucked away. We keep away. it all up inside. Yeah, yeah. Good it's point. not all out. I just don't get the rhetoric. I'm like, man, it's, we've been Because it's, it's, it's all based on um, men acting like women, you mm. know, delicate. And you throw right. like a girl or you run like a girl. I just want to ball tap someone right now. You <laughs> hit like a girl and then you just flick their ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do I flick like a girl? No. And nothing wrong with, with you know, having pain. It's just, yeah, that just... No, it fucking hurts from my understanding. Yeah. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. I keep my ovaries inside my body. Right, right. I don't know if I really have heard that balls are like strong as much as they signify the metaphor, strength, strength. strength. which yes. is also strength still weird. and like chutzpah. Like you got bravery. Big balls. You got bra- or you got brass balls, but, meaning but they can't no one be does. Hurt. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Iron Balls McGinty from the jerk. Oh, he did. Okay, that's or may- right. Or maybe like balls out, like uh, from the bravery standpoint. Okay, it is, it is brave to have a bunch of that's more like sensitive it. testes dangling out. Mm-hmm. around. Right. Yeah, yeah. When all yeah. Balls out. Yeah. yeah, we're giving them too much credit though. <laughs> balls to the wall. Yeah, I'm trying that. Yeah, you're that helpful. is definitely yeah. an at best. I like conception I like where of you're going it with that has that. been severely <laughs> misused. People who live and in, turned into very sexist things. People who live in glass houses should not go balls to the wall. <laughs> In my in my neighborhood, it's gonna be stuck in my head all day. <laughs> all right, guys, um, that's the show. Uh, we've had a really good time. Podcast says hello, and uh, he says thank you very much for all of your care and support. Um, I don't have. Do you guys have any final thoughts? Yeah, actually, there was um, a patron who asked if we could give a shout out to her mom, who's also a patron. Her name's Pluffy, the mom. Nice. Yeah, that's her uh, patron name. And then the daughter is Elizabeth. They emailed us and they were just like, hey, we love you guys. Just a quick little shout out. They're just big fans. So yeah. Hello, Pluffy Hello, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, I'm Pluffy. It's so cute. Pluffy. <laughs> that yes. sounds very fancy. <laughs> Definitely. You said Pluffy? Pluffy. That's awesome. Yeah. Sounds I love like a that. Pokemon or uh, something cute I want to cuddle. Very I can see cute. that. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Definitely. Yes. Part Pluffy. Thank you for being Fluffy. patrons. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please email us the the story behind that name if, if you yeah, want. Yeah, I want to know. We're and, curious. And definite shout out. Hello. Mm-hmm. Hola. Thanks Hello. for listening. 
We yes. appreciate it. Uh, you guys are the best. Seriously, take care of each other. What is tomorrow? Oh, this is the last Daily Beans for this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're recording the main episode tomorrow. We got David Priest. Uh, that's going to be really cool. And so cool. Then uh, we'll put that out Sunday night. And we're also going to be dropping uh, for you guys only our first ad free Mueller report deep dive episode on the first 13 pages. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be an hour on the first 13 pages, guys. So um, it, that's how it's going to go. Because there's just so much context and there's just so much curatorial journalism we have to get through. And and there's a lot of names that are left out that we're going to tell you what they are. And, and there's a lot of legalese that we're going to explain that we've gotten from experts in the past or that we've asked recently. So it's just a really cool deep dive. If you don't already have the, the free Audible version, grab it and take a listen. Listen to the first 13 pages or read them. It's really good reading. It's not hard to read. Um, I, I can't wait for Mueller to write a book because it's going to be really well written. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and we'll we'll be dropping that maybe probably Sunday or Monday. I don't know, depending on how what what I, my agent says is the best day to drop it. <laughs> but it, it'll come out for you guys soon. The whole thing will come out to the public once we've recorded all of them. I, I, I figure like two weeks from now we'll have the whole thing done. So maybe because uh, <laughs> we also have to travel Anyway, we've got yeah. a lot going on, but you get them first and you get them ad free. So thank you for being patrons. Uh, we love you. Take care of each other. Take care of yourself. And I've been AG. I've been Jaleesa Johnson. I've been Jordan Coburn. And this is Muller She Wrote. Muller She Wrote is produced and engineered by AG with editing and logo design by Jaleesa Johnson. Our marketing consultant and social media manager is Sarah Lee Steiner, and our subscriber and communications director is Jordan Coburn. Fact-checking and research by AG, and research assistance by Jaleesa Johnson and Jordan Coburn. Our merchandising managers are Sarah Lee Steiner and Sarah Hirschberger Valencia. Our web design and branding are by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios, and our website is MullerSheWrote.com. 